Wallahi, sometimes failure makes you a person who is much better in character. Do you know that you have people sometimes who develop an arrogance because they pass just like this. They develop an arrogance. They become people who think, hey, you know, that's it. It's me. Thank you, fans. Thank you all. You know, <laughs> to be honest with you, Allah will wake you up one day to say, you know what? You're just one human being. You're going to return to me. These degrees are all temporary. They will help you for a few years. What's going to help you for the entire life after death is your relationship with me. We're not saying don't become whatever you want to become. Become, but understand that will only help you when you serve Allah through your field. Over and above serving Allah through what he has made obligatory upon you. So how I start as a Muslim, if I want to follow Muhammad Sallallahu I will start off with my obligations. I'll be a good Muslim. I'll try my best to fulfill my salah, to dress appropriately. My social relations need to be pure and clean and so on. I need to treat people with respect and what have you. Over and above that, if I am, for example, a doctor, I will ensure that I am honest, trustworthy, hardworking. I serve dedicatedly Muslim, non-Muslim, whoever it is. Even if you're a veterinary, you could enter paradise through that. Do you want to hear the evidence? People say, what? You mean I just look after dogs and I can enter heaven? The answer is perhaps, yes, it could be. If your intentions are right and you're doing it with the right reasons, compassion, being compassionate towards these animals, it's something great and grand. Listen, I'm not encouraging it. I'm actually just saying it's permissible. That's all. I don't want people to give up medicine and say, right, we're becoming vets now. <laughs> because if you take a look at the hadith, it's the third time I'm mentioning it in this season of my presence in Cape Town of the woman who entered Jannah because she quenched the thirst of a dog. What happened? She wasn't even a vet. A vet has spent a lot of time. And when they go, you know, to an ailing dog that is perhaps dying, and they, for example, administer some medication or whatever it be to that particular dog and the dog is doing well and it can bark properly, you know, rah, rah, you know, what would happen? Subhanallah. You weren't expecting that, were you? Mashallah. You know, I was just telling the uncle here that, you know, when we got a, when we got a talk for youth and the university students, I enjoy it because I can just be myself. The minute you see old people with white gray hairs here, you know, you got to, I couldn't do what I just did. did I? <laughs> but the point is you get happy because the dog is once again on his feet, walking around, wagging its tail, whatever, and it's gone. So if Jannah and paradise was achieved by, if Jannah and paradise was achieved by the quenching of the thirst of the dog, what if something more dedicated is provided for that dog? Don't you think there's a greater chance of getting Jannah? Common sense. Subhanallah, we ask Allah to open our doors. So let's be hopeful. Let's try. Let's use our field to reach out to people. Let's become better.